This video is for everyone that has subscribed to my channel. I've probably reached around 1,000 subscribers right now, which makes me really excited. And I just want to thank everyone for the support. And I've also want to explain some things um, about my situation because a lot of you have asked me, how do I know all this stuff? Why do I keep giving advice on emotional abuse? Why do I give, keep giving advice on gaslighting? Um, and I don't want to come out as a know-it-all and obviously I want to do what I preach so I wanted to share with you guys as a thank you for my a thousand subscriber mile how I got gaslighted into a relationship yes it happens to the best of us first of all if you're just stumbling onto this video and you have no idea who I am my name is Olympia and with my studies in cognitive neuroscience and art history what I like to do I like to dissect that pretty little brain of yours to see what makes you tick but also makes you talk. And if you are new, welcome to the G-Spot, AKA the gaslighting spot. This is a place where we talk about gaslighting and in this video, my own gaslighting experience. Um, thoughts, emotions, feelings, anything that has to do with this horrific type of, of emotional abuse and basically just kind of getting back to the person you were. So let's see who left the gaslight on. Ooh, this is not turning off. Okay, so how I got gaslighted into a relationship. Like all gaslighting, um, usually, I mean, I, I, I say this quite a lot. Gaslighting takes patience. Um, if you wanna gaslight someone, if you wanna be effective, like I've done in my video above, you have to be very patient to spread those seeds of doubt. So of course, it started with love bombing. Now, I've, there are all these names for all these kind of actions, which is great because it kind of makes you feel validated because you're thinking, okay, it did happen to me. There is a name to it. So that means it is true. So I was love bombed. Um, I've been gaslighted by tw uh, two relationships specifically. So this is kind of like my pearls of wisdom from both. But it starts with love bombing, showering with gifts, attention, te over texting, over calling, um, making really big statements very early into the relationship such as you are the one i'm gonna marry you you want you're gonna be the mother of my children i would i will um jump in front of a bus for you things that especially when you're at a younger age you're thinking oh this is amazing and ah oh, this is exactly what nicholas spark showed in the notebook and um i'm not negating romance and i'm not especially teenage romance because that's cute and um uh, I believe that it does exist in um, certain circumstances, but usually with gaslighters, they feed off that fantasy. So that's the part where you become addicted. That's the part when you believe that you cannot um, live without the other person. That's the part where no matter how many years pass, you will return to that moment, to those moments of love bombing and your mind will convince you so hard that you can regain that, you can get that back, you can get that honeymoon fat back. It's just, you have to do this one thing and this one thing turns out into a hundred things and then before you know it, few years have passed. So the love bombing. Then, and this happened with both of them, then it is the isolation. So slowly they'll take you away from your friends and family. Obviously this could indicate um, a weakness on my part because you're, you may be thinking, hey, why does that person get to have so much effect on you? Well, that's the beauty of the love bombing phase. They get to know you really well. They really get under your skin. And then they start saying things such as, your friends are just jealous of us. They want to break us up or your friends are uh, spreading false rumors about me or um, your friends are plotting against us, you start to believe them in terms of, hey, maybe they are jealous because look at the honeymoon phase, look at the love bombing, what I have is amazing, obviously someone else would want it. And you just get into this really kind of trippy cycle of, what, of believing that what you have is so worth keeping that you actually have to keep it from other people. And so slowly, slowly you start cutting off ties from your, those friends. And I basically cut off, cut off everyone in my life. And I wouldn't speak to anyone about my relationships because I was terrified that the glass light, the glass lighters, the gas lighters would find out. I was absolutely um, terrified that if I said something bad about the gas lighter, 
um, that it would go back to him and I would be punished for in some way, either by um, not talking to me, by um, giving me the silent treatment, making me feel guilty. So I just kept everything to myself. So you start with the love bombing, then I had the isolation. Then go the mind games. Now, when I entered, funny enough, when I entered into a new relationship after I left um, my previous one, the first thing I asked my partner was no mind games because I was so sick and tired after so many years. And um, I have a lot of mind games in the family too um, going on. So just so sick of the mind games that I just asked one simple thing, be straight with me, be honest with me. It's amazing how many people can't do that. Hell, I can't even do that sometimes. I can't be brutally honest. Sometimes I'm human, I'll lie. Um, but gaslighters will do that on a constant basis. And in terms of my relationships, I was gaslighted for so long that I didn't even know what I felt. I, don't, I didn't even know what I was thinking, whether it was true, whether it was false. So, for example, um, every time I did, so with one of my relationships, every time I did something that was not to their liking or when I was being annoying because I'm human, um, that person would say, hey, I think it's time you go back to your parents. Because for example, um, he would uh, have me over to his house. Or, hey, I think it's time for you to leave right now. And because I'd, I didn't live close to that person, me leaving meant actually taking um, a, an airplane and going to back to my house. So that was kind of a mind game in the sense that they used the idea that you're dependent on them that you're the person that they'll go to and once you don't do something that they like they're they'll say hey i think it's time for you to leave and then you're like no please please don't like please don't do that i'm gonna be a good girl and a lot of people do that in their relationships with um abusers um they believe that if they are they're the good little girl or the good little boy and they do everything by the book textbook that the gaslighter will be pleased and yeah they will be pleased but you're also human so you're gonna be you're obviously gonna make some mistakes in the process so those are one of the mind games i also did a reel on instagram about this um is that person refused to tell me that he wanted to go out with his friends alone so he would use a lot of mind games in order for me to feel bad even for joining him and i realized after that a person you can't make a person feel guilty um that is on them the reasons why they feel they feel guilty is on them maybe you can trigger their guilt but is in no way um your responsibility to control whatever they're feeling so for example he would say to me hey um i'm going out this is by the way the real i'm gonna put my instagram below if you guys want to check it out but the real was hey um we're going out and I'm, I responded, so where are we going? And he would be like, no, not, not we, my friends and I. And then I would feel bad and he would say, okay, do you wanna come with us? And so I would get dressed and the person literally turned around and said, why won't you let me go out with my friends? Why won't you let me go um, party or whatever? And I would, just return, I would just respond, but you just told me to get dressed. So mixed messages, um, a big thing. And you just go back to that honeymoon phase where you're thinking like the love bombing phase where you're thinking, well, if I do this right, then we can return back to that. If I do this, if I'm the good little girl, we can return back to that. So after um, entering into a healthy relationship, I realized that you are not responsible for how the other person feels. The other person feels that way because of X reasons. You may, your actions may have caused them to feel that way but that doesn't mean they are your fault, that it is your fault. So another way that I was gaslighting into the relationship was guilt tripping. It was a big, that's a big tactic, so I'm on gaslighters. So um, for example, because I was isolated from my friends and because I had believed that they were plotting against us, I didn't have a lot of people in my life. So that person would remind me constantly of how alone I am. And that's one of the reasons why I did a video on the maid because um, Sean, the gaslighter, the abuser in the series, is exactly the same thing. He says, I let you um, uh, hang out with my friends. I let you stay at my house. And I had that. I actually went through that where the person would remind me constantly about if I did not have that, if I was not in a relationship with them, I was going to be alone. 
if I did not um had if they had not picked me not they not that we were in a relationship together but I was actually chosen selected by the myriad of girls out there but if they had not selected me that I would have been alone now the thing is that when I entered that relationship the 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 two gaslighting relationships I was in a really bad place in my life and I was very depressed and of course when someone love bombs you and you're depressed that's a very dangerous combination because you suddenly get this huge hit of love of when this validation that you feel that you're missing um especially when you are depressed so the fact that gaslighters will go over will um approach people that are more vulnerable per se is true to an extent but then there's nothing wrong with helping someone out of a sticky situation there's nothing wrong about finding someone when they're depressed and making them happy go working working through working through the depression with them but the difference in my case and in many other abusive relationships is that it was used against me later on so i think the most hurtful phrase was when i decided to be with you you were such a wreck if i wasn't with you you would have killed yourself right now that is a very very strong statement and it was towards the end of that specific relationship where that person uttered that and that's where you can see how much control they believe they have over your life where they literally think that your pure existence is because of them they think that if it wasn't for them you would have killed yourself or at least they want you to believe that so isolation mind games guilt tripping another way is that Another way people do, another way gaslighters trick you into being in a relationship is that they'll give you opposing messages, contradicting messages, I guess you would say. Where I for example was accused of not having a life because I was I, I decided to isolate everyone. So I decided so I didn't have a life, so I was kind of leeching off my partner's life. I was hanging out with their friends, going out um doing their hobbies. Now, ironically, the people that I did have in my life who were also in my gaslighter's life, and this goes to both relationships, were also the people that told me that I should leave them and that they were not good for me and that they were abusing me. Fun fact, as you've seen in the maid too, if you've watched it, when I actually did leave those relationships, those people, those friends, the ones that supposedly told me to leave them, um, they actually sided with the gaslighter because that's how good they are. They make themselves seem like the victim. And at one point, I understood that what I was doing wasn't healthy, not only because of for me, but even them, because being with someone, for example, that is completely enmeshed in your own life can feel suffocating. So I'll give that to that person. So the moment I decided to do something on my own, for example, find my own place to live, so the person, the gaslighter can't turn around and tell me, "Hey, I think it's time you go back to your parents," or "Hey, I think it's time you go back home." That way I would have my own place and I would avoid that. Then the gaslighter, the person I was with, lashed out and basically told me that um I was being selfish, I was being irresponsible, I should have asked them before I considered a moving. And these are just a few tactics, a few ways that I got tricked into I got gaslighted into a relationship and maintained. And also the fact that I wanted to prove so hard that I wasn't the person um they um that they made me to be that i wasn't the person that didn't have a life that i wasn't the person that was insecure that i wasn't the person that was a klutz so that is my personal story of how i got gaslighted into a relationship the the tactics are pretty common um it's just the tip of the iceberg obviously what i'm sharing with you because um i i would be here all day if i had to share with you my entire story um but though This is just basically a thank you for everyone that has subscribed to my channel for giving me those encouraging words telling me that I've helped you either quitting a toxic uh job or leaving a toxic relationship or even being happier in an already healthy relationship because for example you had abusive parents so breaking the cycle all these comments I don't know they've meant so much to me and because people have asked me how I know so much and why I like how do I how do i think the way i think i just want to do this video for you guys so um thank you again uh for the milestone if you haven't already make sure to smash the subscribe button and ring that bell for your weekly thursday videos they're not going to be like this 
and um, share this video, of course, with anyone else who wants to know my story or basically anyone else's story on how they got tricked into being gaslighted into a relationship. And that's it, folks. Thank <laughs> you.